So, all right. So, I know this is your first time obviously meeting me. My name is Heather Lee, and once again, I came from Washington, D.C. And as you mentioned, my uh, speech is on affirmant, really affirmations, okay, uh, with voice fluctuations. All right, I'm really good. There is life and death in the power of the tongue. Every word that we say is like a seed that's planted in the mind, and it will produce. Oftentimes we speak and we think of, and we make idle phrases and, and idle words. Um, but those, those words always are pr produce, okay? So often it's, you might say something to yourself like, I feel fat, or you're a bad child. It, but those words do produce. The importance of words are like a computer. Um, they're planted in the mind and they do produce and, they, and we process words. With, and oftentimes they manifest into our lives and when we think of children, um, or really when we look on adults and we look at the end result in their life and maybe someone is um, not successful for the, to their own standards or terms, or maybe they're out of shape or whatever the standard is, oftentimes we look at their childhood and we can see that it was an elder or someone that spoke into their lives and planted seeds that manifested and were evident in their life. So words are powerful. And that's why my focus today is on affirmant, speaking life and bringing life through our words. An affirmation, what is that? An affirmation is a focused, affirmative statement that speaks to a desire or an intention. There's, we're channeling energy through our words. How do, you, how do you affirm something? How do you even come to the place where you decide, hey, I'm going to affirm. How do I even come up with that? Well, first you have a focus and a vision. And from there you visualize. And from there, you speak life with conviction with your words. So words are powerful, as I mentioned, life and death in them. Daily, you visualize. You think about the words that you're saying. Because once again, as I mentioned, your life, your mind is like a computer, and it's always processing. And um, processing the words that we receive. There's one of my favorite books is by James Allen. And James Allen wrote um, As a Man Thinking. And in that book, he says, our minds are likened to a garden. A garden, excuse me. Um, you either actively cultivate it or allow it to run wild. But whatever, whatever you do, it's going to produce. So it's important to guard our minds. And one of the ways that we do that is with our words and what we receive. Words can come from television, come from music, right? Dialogue with one another. You can have negative conversations with someone. But once again, words are powerful. Okay? So with that affirmation, once you focus and you decide, hey, I've acknowledged that words are powerful, and you focused, and then on a daily basis, you've decided, I'm going to affirm positive things because my mind is like into a garden and I am constantly processing. So you focus and you say, I am greatness. That is an affirmation. I am affirmative statement with convic conviction. I am a toastmaster. I am a queen. I am confident. I am greatness. And then from there, you're going to end up embodying that, embodying that based on the power of words. All right. So with that uh, in mind, let's use our words wisely. And as I mentioned earlier, there is life and death in the power of the tongue, and we eat the fruits of our words. Okay? That's actually a, a scripture in the Bible, Proverbs 18.21. Heather, um, yes. I enjoy your speech very much because I feel you have very natural uh, posture and make people feel you're very open. Mm -hmm. And then I feel also I love the, the warmness of your voice. Oh, it makes, makes me feel very comfortable when you're talking. And then also I like that you ask questions and then you, you're trying to uh, make us curious with questions. Also, I like the antidote you are using for in your uh, speech. You are using computers, seeds, garden. So they sort of visualize the abstract concepts. That's great. Uh, one thing I, I think that can be improved is that um, you guys just sort of say, uh, excuse me. So, okay. which I think 
you sort of in a way uh, enlarge the, the error you're making. Mm -hmm. If you just just ignore it, pretend it doesn't happen, then the audience probably won't even notice it. Okay. Okay. Yeah, so uh, never apologize. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Okay, sounds awesome. Yeah. Uh, overall, I, I love it. It's a great speech. It's Thank a good you. speech. Um, well, I thought it was uh, uh, an excellent speech. I thought you seemed very comfortable and relaxed. Um, and uh, for, from my standpoint, it's very impressive. What, uh, what you were able to do, and uh, that it's, it seems to be a, all very original thoughts, and you know, you put a lot of yourself into it, which is, uh, I think, very nice. Um, I was wondering about the, the, um, the part of the speech that's supposed to be vocal variety, and um, I, it seems like your voice does go up and down quite a bit. Um, I thought it would have been interesting maybe to play with that a little bit more and, and um, maybe make that a little more extreme. Heather, I really enjoyed your speech. Affirm it. You went ahead and defined, look, I'm getting ready to tell you about affirmations, you know. So that was nice. Uh, you had the friendliness that was so important. Your posture was nice. And you had great eye contact. You didn't miss any of us in the audience. And I really enjoyed it. I had one distractor. Okay. I just got through looking at a picture of a, a couple of things that you might have as a distractor. Yes. One picture was a man looking up in the ceiling. You can do that. The other picture was a lady with a real abstract design on her dress. But guess what, Heather? Yes. That little emblem on your black pants. Oh, okay. I almost wanted to brush it off. <laughs> and then I realized, oh, that's the symbol of the brand name. Yes, thank you. So, Heather. Yes. Um, You've got a very good stage presence up there, so you captivate the audience both visually and vocally, and uh, especially with your topic as well, too. So just a couple of things that really fine-tune it, yeah. and in some way I kind of like to think it's like a little swagger to it. Sure. And that is, um, you've got great uh, gestures. It's almost like a, it reminds me, oh, she must be Italian. I mean, just uh, <laughs> speaking of it. So, but when you finish it, I notice you, you go into the prayer position. Uh, just put your hands down. So use your hands okay. you know, uh, with intention, and then just put them down rather than here. It just seems like uh, suffocating as opposed okay. to anything else. Uh, the other part is great eye contact. Here's the swagger part. Just hold the eye contact just a little bit longer. So instead of bouncing off like a politician, they go here, 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 there. You're just bouncing off. Just Hold it as if you're just talking to one person at a time. Well, Heather, I also enjoyed your speech. I found it was interesting. You used a lot of good high-level vocabulary, so that added really to the content, to the positive content of the speech. I also felt that you were, you have a good stage presence. I felt that you were confident, so I concluded that she must have been in Brooklyn Toastmaster for a long time, or maybe you give speeches as part of your work, either or one of those two. And you use really good planted seeds, I also agree. You you say you tell somebody something to a child and you're really planting a seed. If it's positive, that seed will grow into a positive adult, and if it's negative, it will stick in its mind. Um, you mentioned that words are very powerful, I 100% agree. Just one, um, uh, or maybe two, when you started, I thought that while you were just starting too quickly, you were not really in the speech, but then when I think that was, it's, it's an appropriate, it's a compliment that you just said, I am giving my speech, so it was on a low tone, and I said, I hope she doesn't continue with that same tone. But then you immediately gave us that this is my introduction to me, and then when you went into the speech, you changed your tone, so that was very appropriate. Um, the only thing is, and it could be me that I was not really listening, I wasn't sure what was the topic, what are you going to talk about. So my recommendation is try to define what is the what is the topic. I'm going to talk to you about this yes. word and powerful so the speaker, the, the audience will feel relaxed that okay, I know what this speech is all about, so I'm going to focus on something. Excellent speech. Heather, you had a lot of examples. Mm -hmm. There's something you can do that's better than examples. Okay. Talk about what that is a little bit. 
eye contact, I second what um, Rocky said more. One person, one thought. And we kind of got the beginning of a thought, but not the full thought. So the eye contact is good, it can be better. And it's very organized. Overall, it's a decent speech. Perfectly good, perfectly fine. To take it to that really zazzy kind of level that, that Rocky was talking about. And one thing is, you know, somebody said, I forget who it was, that, that words are, are like a seed. And so your opening, that's the seed. So if you plant the seed in a kind of a rocky garden, you're not going to get the effect you want. You go up there, it's all you. That opening's got to catch attention, got to pull people in. Think about the word we. Is we a lot? We is a challenging word because it involves you know, yourself. A better word is you. You is a powerful word. You connects with the audience. And use it as a suggestion. Have you ever, or did you ever, or you might, you might have these experiences. You invites people in, whereas we just presumes. Sometimes the audience hears we and they think, forget it, not me. They just count themselves right there. But if you invite them in, have you ever, did you ever? Do you know someone who did? Mm -hmm. That would be another one, too. Oh, not me, but oh, they did that. Mm -hmm. That can pull people in, too. The thing that's better than example is a story. Tell stories. Stories need to be seen, known, and heard. So a little background about what the story is. Make it personal so you're the butt of the story. And ideally, you go through a transformation. I used to do this. Now I understand something. Now I do things differently because somebody helped me out. So I'm going to give you that, that tip. And dialogue talking back and forth. Dialogue is so important. So dialogue ideally should build conflict, grow, grow conflict, and that'll help pull the story out. And also, as Rocky said, the home position here, keep your home position at your side, and open up yourself up. Okay. Great speech. I'm just going to make it even greater speech. Absolutely. Fellow Toastmasters, and especially Heather, I think we can all agree that Heather was a lovely presence up here. You have a, a beautiful smile, and you were very kind about sharing it with all of us. I, I saw you looking around many times, looking at individual people, and you really, you have a beautiful smile, you have a beautiful voice, and I felt that we were gifted with that. But I think there are some of us who may have felt that you were, you didn't give us quite enough of your attention. You would look at us and we would smile, but then you kind of move on before you got to the end of a point. I think that it is far more effective if you finish a sentence while looking at one person before moving on to the next. One of the other things that I think that we uh, were fortunate to see was, or and hear, was the way you used your words. I thought that you did have some very descriptive words. You talked about the importance of words. I was very captivated by that whole first paragraph that you did where you talked about how words can affect us. But I wonder how many people were sort of unfocused by the time we got to that because you came up here and you introduced yourself. One thing I can suggest is that it's better to have, if you want to have somebody introduce you, give it to the Toastmaster. You came up and said, so let me tell you a little about myself. I'm from here, I'm from there. And then you started your speech and you know, we're, we're thinking, you diluted your time and you diluted your message by giving us unnecessary information that somebody else could have given us about you. That's one thing I would suggest for you for next time. Another thing you did that I think can be done very effectively, and, I, and people who come here regularly know that this is helpful, is checking in with the audience. You said many times, uh, let me tell you something, okay? That was what I was thinking. And you said, or don't you think that that's, or you didn't say this, you said, this is something that you need to do, right? So you were kind of getting the audience to agree with you, but I believe that could be done more effectively if you ask, actually ask the audience. Has this ever happened to you, Christina? What, happened, what would you think if such and such happened? Rocky, how do you think you can improve your own life with daily affirmation? And you don't necessarily want a response from them. But has anyone in here ever used daily affirmations? Show of hands. Okay, one person, but at least that's a way to start out. That's a way to get the audience involved. We talked about affirmations, and I think that, that 
I would have liked more information on the affirmation. I don't think you needed to give us quite as much about the importance of words. You didn't have a lot of time. This whole affirmation idea is something that I, I'm kind of intrigued by. I would have liked more information about that. I think uh, many of us would have felt more secure in knowing that it's something that works if you had, as Tim suggested, you know, stories of people that it worked for or some kind of statistics. Um, also, one other thing I would suggest for you is that you started several sentences with so and and, and just as with your unnecessary introduction, I believe that so and and automatically detracts from what you have to say. So I heard that President Barack Obama was, arrested, was elected a couple days ago. Well, so did everybody else. And if I just said President Obama was elected two days ago, okay, that's setting up a platform and people expect something after that. When you started out with so, people are thinking, well, what's the point of this? Is this like news to you? Or I would strongly suggest that you try and 